Hey guys, welcome. This Kenji episode is going to be a little bit different than the other ones. Today we are taking a look at all the companions and unique recruits you can encounter in the game of Kenji while ranking them in a tier list. This is going to be all opinion based guys, but I'll take things like uh, stats, availability of unique dialogue options or even their appearance stuff like that in consideration i can't ensure that i've encountered every single unique recruit featured in this list for in at least one of my playthroughs but i think i got to see quite a lot of them before we start guys just want to let you know there might be spoilers ahead so watch out all right, I'm going to use the official Kenshi wiki site. There we got all the unique recruits listed very nicely. Okay, let's take a look at the first one. Agnu is his name. He can be found imprisoned by the Thrall Masters in the top floor of Tower of Abuse. I did not encounter Agnu yet, but looking at this dude, I got a bunch of those uh, soldier bots at my base already like a bunch of them. They make pretty damn as good guards for the turrets. You know, you let them sit at the turrets and they shoot everything nonstop. They don't need food, they don't need to piss. You can set them up on a turret 24 seven. So this is pretty awesome. Agnu has several lines of unique dialogue, most of which are screams because similar to Ray, Agnu is unable to speak. Agnu often shares these dialogues with Beep. <laughs> So, a friend for Beep, that's awesome. His stats are not that awesome at all. It's just everything on level 1, except for strength. Strength is at an unbelievable level 50. Holy shit, dude, that's a lot. Strength at 50 is damn as good for a new recruit. That's really good, holy shit. Trivia, Agnu was named after Chris Hunt's motorcycle, <laughs> no way, which was in turn named after the headless body of Agnu from Futurama due to its similar personality of loud growling and being impossible to control. That's interesting, Chris Hunt named <laughs> this character after his motorcycle. I also got the motorcycle, <laughs> but I did not give my motorcycle a name. I just call it Honda. <laughs> I really want to see a unique recruit called Honda in the world of Kenji someday. <laughs> All right, let's see. Where do we gonna put this dude in? Agnu. I didn't encounter him yet and he, he got not very special stats ex except for his strength. He got some kind of unique dialogue options, but you know, his appearance is just generic. He looks like every other soldier bot I already got at my base. So I'm gonna put him at C tier. Okay, next character. Bart. I think I've seen this dude somewhere. Bart is a unique recruit that can be found in the bar of Bad Teeth, Blister Hill, Stag, any of the way station of World's End. He costs 3000 cats to hire. Bart has a traitorous personality. Traitorous personality, that's it's not nice. He has many lines of unique dialogue in the form of songs and stories. Most other player characters will complain against his constant noise. <laughs> so he's noisy, he's traitorous and look at his stats. Everything's just at one. That's pretty damn as shitty, dude, if you ask me. Dude got no skill at all. He sings like trash. Every other unique character thinks he's annoying. And she got a traitorous personality. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> Someone commented, only thing worse than his stats is his singing. I'm sorry, Bart, but there's absolutely everything wrong about you, dude. I'm gonna have to put you into F tier. Sorry, dude. Maybe next time. Of course. The one and only. You see guys, the list is sorted by alphabetical order. So we're going from A to Z. And of course, Beep has to come early on. Beep is a hiver, he's a worker drone. He got exiled by his own people because he was a little bit defective. And from that day on, 
he started to live in Mongrel. He is a little bit annoying, but that's what makes him so special. You know, Beep's strongest weapon is saying Beep over and over again. He is not very much skilled, his stats are pretty damn much trash, but what he lacks in strength, skill, endurance, dexterity, toughness, perception, he makes it up by being a cute little boy. <laughs> I think Beep's very cool. He just has to be in every single playthrough of Kenshi. He was one of the very first recruits we got in our team. He got a lot of dialogue options and he can even be transformed into a cyber beep. You know, hivers tend to lose their limbs quite often and upon giving him some robotical limbs, he starts to get some new dialogue options where he says he's the strongest warrior or a cyber beep instead of the normal beep so he's pretty cool I really like beep I can't tell much about him except for he, he has a place in my heart so for beep of course we're gonna put beep into S tier he got such a lovely face he just has to be an S tier Bo, I actually also seen Bo at uh, Bad Scratch. I think it was Bad Scratch. Bo is part of the anti-slavers. She can be found in Black Scratch, accompanied by an anti-slaver Yonin. Yonin, Yonin. All right. Despite her small stature, she is called Big Bo by members of the anti-slavers. She is also capable of asking a squad of any slavers you encounter to bodyguard your squad for three days. Strangely, this seems to work on Tin Fist squad, so one can potentially get Tin Fists and Grey to follow them around. Holy shit, dude! What the hell? She wears specialist armor, 5% chance of masterwork armor. It has weapons manufactured by ancient holy shit this lady is overpowered as shit and look at her stats damn dude holy shit look at this she's decent at combat skills she's quite good with the katana thievery skills holy shit that's impressive and she got some decent athletic and swimming skills dude that's one of the best characters out here isn't she Big Bo can be recruited if the player is an ally of the anti-slavers and has killed or imprisoned Buckmaster, Agor, Lady Katkana, Longan, Emperor Tengu. So there are some conditions you have to fulfill, some requirements so you can actually recruit her. You can't recruit her right away. Alright, I think for being such a massive unit, for having such incredible stats, I'm gonna put Bo, Big Bo into A tier. I think she d deserves that spot. I'm not gonna give her S tier because of the lack of unique dialogue options and uh, extreme requirements you need to fulfill before you can even recruit her. So we're gonna put her in A tier. Okay, moving on. Burn. Another skeleton unique recruit. He is an old skeleton. He talks about that he was an adventurer but decided to stop due to old age. Found in the tower in the floodlands. Old age? How old is that dude? He's a robot. What does it mean he's old? Like 4000 years or something like that? Burn is one of the easiest skeletons to recruit early in the game. He has only two unique dialogue lines and uses the skeleton dialogue package instead of a unique one. He got some okay -ish stats. Not the best, not the worst. He looks like a decent recruit. I think we're gonna put Burn next to Agno. They're quite similar, so I think they fit nicely together. Next character is Cat. Cat is a medic and has the dumb personality. Why does he has the dumb personality? As a medic, I mean, you gotta have to be a little bit intelligent, right? He is a United Cities citizen. Cat was dressed very nicely on his way to a date when he was mistaken for a rich person because of his nice clothes. He got caught by the dust bandits. They wanted a ransom for him because they thought he was someone important. But no one showed up. <laughs> so he was left in prison in the Dust King's Tower. The UC nobles don't even know him. Dude, that's so sad, man. I'm so sorry for you. I feel a little bit pity. Also, his stats are not that good. He's only exceptional at field medic. He's a good medic and he's also quite good at science. So if you need the medic in your team, take Cat. But I don't know, I don't really like Cat because for one, he is 
part of the United Cities. And also you gotta have to free him beforehand before you can even uh, recruit him. So that's a little bit of work for someone with mediocre medical skills. I don't know. I don't think he's really worth it. So let's see, where do we put Cat? Thinking about it, Cat is also a very interesting name. You know, in Kenshi, you say cats to the currency in Kenshi. So he's worth like one cat. Maybe that's a reference. I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna put you into D tier. I'm sorry, dude. Also, guys, this is all opinion based. Just want to let you know again, if you if you encounter this dude and you really like playing this dude, uh, that's nice for you. It's just my opinion. I think he's not worth the risk and everything like that. But if you got a team consisting out of Cat and Bard, <laughs> that's very nice for you. <laughs> Maybe they even get along quite well. I don't know. All right, let's move on. Holy shit. Look at this dude. Whoa. <laughs> This dude's name is literally Chad. He's a unique recruit that can be found at the bar of Flats Lagoon. That's the place where Beep is currently right now. He spawns with no weapon and claims to have traveled into the southeastern part of the map, encountering big things and escaping after punching one in the nose. <laughs> you can recruit him for 9000 cats. Well, he got his prize. That's not cheap. He has a dumb personality. Dude, <laughs> that's a typical chat for you. Punching big things in the nose, overconfident. Aside from his recruitment dialogue, Chad has nothing unique to say. Damn dude, that's pretty damn sad. But look at his stats. He got decent stats. That's truly a chat. This character design is pretty awesome. He looks cool. He got a cool ass backstory. He literally punched a big thing in the nose and got away with it. I'm gonna put Chad into B tier. Quite honestly, I think that's a cool dude. Cornelius. Cornelius is a goat follower you can get from a nomad. He can be found in settled nomad village in Drag. A nomad animal trader will sell Cornelius for 15,000 cats. That's pretty expensive. But if you talk to his owner, Goatman, in a nearby hideout building, he will offer you a half off discount. You see, Cornelius as goat, he got a pretty funny name, but that's all about him. You could recruit any other type of goat out there in Kenshi and name it Cornelius. And you got the same individual. And I don't know if he even fits into this list since uh, he is just a goat. <laughs> I'm gonna put you into F tier. Moving on. Crumble John. <laughs> Most of you guys know him as Sensei. <laughs> I renamed him into Sensei, but his original name is Crumble John. He is quite funny. He is a very cool and unique recruit. Okay -ish stats. He's pretty strong. He got a little bit of a crooked back. You know, he's running around looking like a shrimp. And I guess it's mostly because of his <laughs> large ass fragment eggs on his back. This shit weights a ton, but he can become quite strong and he got a lot of unique dialogue options. And you can even get him for free in Mongrel. Just talk to him. He does not want to join you at first. But you gotta have to talk to him over and over again until he gets annoyed and just follows you. He's pretty cool. So I would suggest getting him into your team. I'm not gonna read all of his backstory here right now, but he got so much to offer, guys. He is very funny, got really cool dialogue options. For me, Crumble John, aka Sensei, definitely S tier. He's one of the best characters out there in Kenji. Digna, she is a former resident of Stag. Her father caught her trying to escape. So she killed him and fled to Floatsom village. Holy shit. She got those mantis looking eyes. Very scary character. Very scary woman. She has the player Floatsom dialogue package, which is shared with all recruits from the Floatsom ninjas. Well, so she's like Knife and Riva, I guess. All the same from the Floatsom village. Well, she got extremely poor stats. I don't know, man. She does not really look like a unique character. She got nothing. She even killed her father. She looks quite scary. So 
I'm sorry, Digna, I'm gonna put you into F tier. I'm really sorry. Maybe there are people out there really loving Digna, you know, playing only with one character and it's Digna. But I'm sorry that this is all my opinion, okay, guys? Uh, <laughs> for me, she's F tier, so let's move on. <laughs> Dr. Chang, I love this dude. He's a very good medic. He is a surgeon with unique dialogue options. He can be found in a bar in Mud Town, located in the swamp or in Shark. He, he does not have very special stats. He's a little bit fat and looks like an, just an old man. He's not even Asian, despite his Asian sounding name, but he got a lot of funny dialogue options, especially when he is about to heal. I got Dr. Chang in my base and he automatically heals every single one of my people if they got hurt or if we are getting attacked. He's the first one to rush out and treat those wounds. So for me, he found a good place in my heart. I really love this character. So I'm going to put Dr. Chang into B tier. Else. Who the hell is else? He is fat, he is alcoholic, he is simple minded, he is quite relatable. <laughs> He is an empire citizen with a small bounty on his head for stealing alcohol from distilleries. <laughs> what the hell, dude? <laughs> he wanders around town begging for food. What a damn lad, man. <laughs> when recruited, he has three bottles of cactus rum in his inventory. He can be found in Shao Batai, no matter what world states are affecting it. He will join the player after giving him <laughs> a sloppy 300 cats. Of course, he must have the dumb personality. As you can see, he's a shack. He's a little bit... He's built different. He got no special stats except for stealth and thievery. Uh, of course, because he steals a lot of rum, right? He's also called Pickles and Squint at some point. Okay. Well, he looks funny. I would definitely take this dude into my team if I came across him. Quite unique personality. But he does not have uh, unique dialogue options. Damn, dude. You could have gave this dude some really cool dialogue options, man. So we're gonna put else into C tier. Damn right, son. This is your place. Next one, Esper. Esper is imprisoned within Tengu's vault. With a bounty of 25,000 cats, Esper can join the player faction after being freed from imprisonment and safely escorted away from the prison. Esper does not really have that impressive stats. Well, his stats are pretty damn as low. He does not have special dialogue options. But I really wonder, <laughs> what did this guy do to get a bounty of 25,000 cats on his head? To be honest, Instead of recruiting that dude, I would just take him and get the bounty. <laughs> That's way much more worth than this shithead. I'm sorry, Esper, but I gotta have to give you the D tier. Here now, this character is brilliant. Green. This is one of my absolute favorite characters besides Beep. He looks identical to Beep, but I don't know why. Maybe the picture is a little bit outdated on the Kenshi Wiki, but in my playthrough, he had a scar on his face like some green stripes or whatever that is. It makes, it gives a little bit more uniqueness to him. He can be found at the bar at the Dancing Skeleton in Shark or in Mud Town. I personally found green at the bar at the Dancing Skeleton bar in Shark and he only costs 2300 cats and he is worth every single penny because he is an excellent shooter. He is like a sniper. I mean everything order is just level 1 but his ranged skills, look at that. His turret skill is at level 65 and his crossbow skill at level 65. This is the best shooter in all of Kenshi. That's the best sniper. And for that low of a price, I would suggest everyone, every single one of you guys out there to get this dude. Because green definitely deserves it. So we gonna put green into A tier. Very good character. Green Finger. I, I've seen Green Finger. He is located at the fishing village. We've been there. He or she is a farmer who is tired of living so close to the cannibals and can be recruited by the player for 2000 cats. Green Finger has a fearful personality. Look at this guys. There's a 30% chance you could encounter Green Finger as a female. Damn dude, that's awesome. What the hell? He got good strength. He's good at engineering. 
But look at this, his laboring and farming skills are at level 40. That's impressive. That's especially impressive for a Scorchlander. I mean Scorchlanders, do they not have like decreased experience gain when it comes to farming or laboring? Yeah, look at this, they got a decreased rate at cooking, farming, laboring and strength. So quite impressive for someone like that having farming and laboring skill at level 40. Well, Greenfinger is a very good addition to the party if you need like someone that is good at farming. I'm gonna put Greenfinger into D tier. He or she does not really have unique dialogue options. The appearance is also not very that intriguing. So I'm gonna put her, her or he into D tier. Griffin is a unique recruit found in any Holy Nation bar. Maybe Van Damme even encountered Griffin at one point. He believes he had a vision from Orkran, who showed him that he would meet a wealthy wanderer and that wanderer would lead him to the truth of the first extinction. Whether or not you believe him, he believes this wanderer is you and asks for 9000 cats as proof of, of your wealth. Holy shit, dude. Well, he's a former soldier from the Holy Nation, but he has nothing against other races. That's quite interesting. And he is even willing to travel with them. He has an honorable personality, his own unique dialogue package and several lines of unique dialogue. This is a pretty cool as damn unique uh, recruit. I should get him at some point. He can be found at most of the holy nation cities. He got mediocre stats. He's really good with any type of weapons except the pole arm. This dude looks really awesome. He is unique, he looks buff as hell, he got a cool ass name, he got good stats. That's an actual absolute unit. Alright, let's see, where do we gonna put him? I can't really decide between A or B tier, but I think he tends to be a little bit more A tier because of his unique uh, dialogue options and his honorable personality. I think he's quite cool and yeah, let's put him into A tier. Hamut. This guy's name is Hamut. Hamut, look at this dude, man. <laughs> Damn, dude, he looks so sad. And Hamut does have a very sad story. I'm a little bit sorry for him. Hamut's wife has been taken by slavers. I don't know if she's dead or not, but he's really pissed at all the slavers, you know. I personally found him a shark. He also got the honorable personality. He got decent stats. He got a pretty damn as cool backstory. I don't want to tell everything about it. Uh, he got a lot of dialogue options. You just gotta have to experience Hamut. And he even got even more unique dialogue options if you are traveling together with Mew. If Hamut and Mew are together traveling around, they're just talking about stuff non-stop. I think because Mew reminds him a little bit of his wife. I really like Hamut. I'm gonna put Hamut into B tier. Next one is Headshot. She, she? She's a slave hunter who specializes in turrets and crossbows. She costs 7500 cats to recruit and can be found in either A socket or slave markets in Slaver Bar. She has a traitorous personality. Damn dude, look at this. That's why she's called Headshot. She got pretty damn as good ranged skills. Turrets, level 55, crossbows at level 50. Not as good as green, but also very decent. Another really good uh, recruit. But she costs 7,500 cats. Compare that to green. He only costs like 2,300. That's nothing. That's a really cruel character for all you guys out there that want to play as slavers, as the bad guys. I really recommend getting headshot into your team. Very cool character. She's not as good as green. She looks, she got a really cool as bitch face, but she has no really unique dialogue options. I think I'm gonna put her into B tier. Hops. <laughs> I think most of you guys know about Hops. He is one of the first recruits you can encounter early on in the game. I think he also was one of my first uh, recruits I found in Kenshi. He is a crazy old man with many stories to tell. He most often spawns in fishing village, typically hanging around the bar or wandering around town. However, he has a small chance to spawn in a variety of other locations across the map 
including Morn, the hub, way station, world's end, as well as several town overrides. He will join you for free after you talk with him for a little bit. He got quite the stories to tell. He does not have the craziest stats, but for as a beginner character when you start out playing Kenji, if you can get your hands on Hobbs, get him right away. He is a very good addition to your uh, team, especially early on in the game. So we're gonna put Hobbs also into B tier because of his really interesting story, his dialogue options, and of course his availability early on for most beginner players. Horse? This dude's name literally Horse. What the hell? <laughs> he can be found in a bar in the fishing village in the northern coast. He needs 4,500 cats to pay off his bill at the flop house. He can be easily recognized by his facial red war paint, unseen on other Sheikh warriors and the legacy of the region he presumably traveled. He has a traitorous personality and his own unique player dialogue package. That's pretty interesting. So this is a really unique character. His stats are not that impressive. Okay, he got level 10 athletics. I must say he does look quite interesting. His face looks like Wilson. Well, interesting character. I did not encounter him. He seems to have some sort of dialogue options. His stats are not that impressive. I'm gonna put him into C tier. Infinite Wing Wang. Dare you engage the might of Infinite Wing Wang. Dare you? <laughs> this dude got a crazy ass name. He's a Greenlander male that can be found in a bar at the town of Mongrel. I did encounter him several times in my visits to Mongrel. He looks really cool, very impressive dude, really cool damn ass name, but he was way too expensive. If talked to, he will offer himself up for hire for 100,000 cats. But there are multiple paths you can take down through his dialogue and you can bargain his cost down to 5,000 cats? What? I didn't know that. <laughs> what the hell? He is one of the strongest recruits, surpassed only by Griffin and depending on stat randomizing, Kang. Holy shit, he has pretty damn as good armor and good weapon for a recruit. His stats are okay. He got good strength, he got good dexterity, he's good at melee attacks, he likes playing around with sabers. But it seems like he does not really have that much of crazy as unique dialogue options. He got only a couple of unique dialogue options upon the first encounter with him, where you bargain down from 100,000 cats to 5,000. Well, he got a cool name, he got pretty decent stats, he looks handsome. I think we also gonna put Wing Wang into B tier. He's similar to Griffin, but not as good to gr as Griffin. So I'm sorry, dude, you gotta have to live with B tier. Izumi is a unique recruit from the Empire. She is a young scientist and medic. She can be hired for 2500 cats. I did encounter this character, but I wasn't really sure if this character was a unique character. She can be found at any town controlled by United Cities or Empire Peasants. Her stats are not that impressive except for medic and science. So she is a medic. Her stats are the same like as the other medics we already featured on this list. She has a smart personality and after being recruited will have the player civilian dialogue package. She has six dialogue lines linked to her, only one of which is exclusive to her. Okay, that's a little bit sad. She could have been a really cool potential character. Well, there's nothing really special about her, except for that she's a good medic. I don't know, man. I'm gonna put Izumi into D tier. I have so much jewelry. I got more jewelry, and it's not even about the jewelry, because you know. It's jewelry yeah, with the jewelry. <laughs> I'm a cook, not a fighter, man. I know better than to needlessly seek out death. Well, she's a cook who used to own a bar, but Czech barbarians took it over. She can be found at any town controlled by United Cities or Empire peasants. She has a smart personality and after recruitment will have the player Tough Merc dialogue package. She has a single line of unique dialogue. However, it is also shared with Digna, Izumi and Riva. 
Her skills are pretty damaged trash except for cooking. Her cooking level is at level 50. Well, interesting. She looks quite generic to me. Nothing really unique about her. So I'm really sorry, Jewel. You got a nice name though, but I also gotta have to put you into D tier. Kang. I heard about this dude. I hope I pronounced his name right. He's a unique recruit that can be found at the Shack Kingdom. He spawns an Admak, Squin or less than. He has a crazy personality. Dude, he can be hired for 6000 cats. And should anyone bother you, he will rip out their spines. But aside from his requirement dialogue, he has nothing unique to say. Holy shit, look at those stats. He got really crazy as stats. Look at this, strength, toughness, dexterity, everything on level 20 from the get go. That's pretty damn as good. I think he might be one of the best one, one with the best stats. But I'm, he, he got a crazy cool ass name. He stand, look at this stance, he looks quite menacing. He got really good stats, but no unique dialogue options. That's really sad. Personally, I did not recruit him at any point of my playthroughs. So I can't say much about him. Maybe if I got some sort of bond to him. I would have put him into A tier, but for now I'm gonna put him into B tier. Alright, Knife. We got Knife at our team. She's currently at the base working at weapons workbench and armor workbench. I know I should seek out for like a Scorchlander for those type of jobs, because they got quite an experience boost there. But I just thought like it would uh, fit quite well for Knife making weapons. <laughs> she is from the Floatsome village. She is a Floatsome ninja and she seeks out to travel. She will join the player after 6000 cats payment which she intends to send home to her mother in stack she does not have any sort of unique dialogue options but her stats are okay i think it fits the price she looks quite decent she got the craziest name but here guys i gonna have to put knife into c tier Lumi, her eyes widen excitedly. Do you know what I love more than anything in all the land? Crabs! <laughs> Lumi is a female unique recruit who can be found in Crab Town. I've never been in Crab Town, but I've seen the people from Crab Town. They're pretty damn as crazy. She loves crabs, Mr. Crabs. She can be hired for 6,000 cats. Being allied with the Crab Raiders does not affect Lumi's dialogue. Okay. <laughs> Look what the people wrote. She is cute, so I recruited her. Cute? Dude, she looks like she just crawled out of the TV. Well, her stats are quite low. No unique dialogue option. Pretty expensive. Looks very scary. I don't want to be too mean, guys. But I think I'm gonna put her into D tier. Luquin. 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 Luquin is a unique recruit imprisoned within Tengu's vault. He has a 30,000 cats bounty, but has a brave personality. There are two books that can be found titled Legend of Luquin 1 and Legend of Luquin 2 that seems to refer to him. And after he was imprisoned for murdering the noble lord Kurosaka, and for sending death threats to the others, he was forced to write Beautiful Tengu a tribute. He has been in the world for 15 years. If freed, he will join the player's faction. That's a very interesting character. Dude got pretty damn as crazy stats. Look at this. Stealth at level 50. Assassination at level 50. This dude is literally an assassin. Holy shit. So guys, uh, get this dude if you want to have someone assassinated. I gotta have to give him that. You gotta have to be a badass at some point if there are like two books titled about you. I don't know if he got uh, some sort of unique dialogue options, but since his stats are really impressive and he looks quite decent, I'm gonna put this dude also into B tier. Okay, Luquin, that's that was quite impressive. Mew. 
I got Mew, I recruited her when we were at the swamps, at Shark, at one of those bars, I guess. She claims to be an ex-slave who escaped with a friend called Ned. I don't want to talk too much about her background, but she is a quite excellent farmer. She got really good laboring skills. She got like laboring at level 30 and farming at level 60. So a perfect character if you start out making your own base and need some food early on. Muse at my base doing nothing else except looking out for the crops. She also has some uh, unique dialogue options while traveling around together with Hamut. So really decent character. I highly recommend getting Mew. Definitely a good addition for your team. I'm gonna put Mew into B tier. All right, I had to expand the tier list a little bit because there was no more fit for the B tier. Let's see. Oron, what the hell is that? Holy shit, that's a massive unit. That's a big woman, holy shit. I need to be freed 3,500 cats to free me from my lord. Let me fight for you, outsider, as a mighty warrior once again. Peasant life is killing my soul, I need battle. Oron is a shack retainer and unique recruit spawning in either Admech, Squin or Last Stand. Oron promises loyalty to your character in exchange for a chance to fight. She has an honorable personality, but aside from recruitment dialogue, Oron has nothing unique to say. She got uh, low stats actually, she's okay at melee attacks, she got a little bit of strength and a little bit of athletics. Well, I don't see anything unique about her. Oh, wait a second. Gender, 50% female chance. <laughs> no way. So there could be a parallel universe where she's a dude. I want to live in a universe where she's a she because of her big muscles, dude. Well, since she got really low stats, no unique dialogue options, but a really big personality. <laughs> I'm gonna put her into C. Pia, she's a fast runner. Her sister, Naivia, was also a member of the Floatsome Ninjas, but recently died doing what she loved doing, fighting the paladins. She can be found in Floatsome Village and has a dumb personality. Dude, <laughs> like Mew who spots spiders, Pia is always on alert for holy paladins, acting as a useful radar for the group. That's an actual quite unique skill she has there. And she got level 50 at athletics. Holy shit. She's definitely a fast runner. And she's pretty strong. Well, Pia is an actual good character. On my play, she and Chad are married. I think they both could be good friends with more interactions. Waifu. Dude, guys, chill out. Well, I think Pia is a pretty decent character. She got quite a unique skill. So we're gonna put Pia right next to Mew into B tier. Rain the Giant is a former 100 Guardian and unique recruit. She was named by the Shack leader, the Stone Golem. She can be found in either a Squin, Admech or Last Stand Bar. And it costs 7500 cats to recruit her. Damn dude, holy shit, she got pretty damn ass uh, crazy stats. Look at this. Strength at level 20, Dexterity at level 20, melee attack, melee defense. She's pretty damn as good with all weapons except for pole arm. Good athletics, really good character actually. <laughs> Someone wrote, after 250 hours of my first playthrough, I realized Rain the Giant was a female shake, lol. Yeah, she does look a little bit like a male character. I think it also depends what uh, kind of equipment you give her. Very cool. This is a great character actually. But I guess no unique dialogue options. Rain or Rana the giant. I guess we're gonna put her into C tier because she's actually quite strong. Ray Ray. I found him at the slave market and I immediately fell in love with him. He is mute. He can't talk shit. 
He can't say a word. He got his tongue cut out very sadly. He is a mute slave who can be bought for 1000 cats from Barfly. As you guys could guess, he has no unique dialogue options. It's not possible for Ray to talk to any type of shopkeeper. If Ray is the only playable character left in your team, it will be pretty damn as hard for you to survive out there. Cause you can buy shit, you can talk to anyone except for you are able to free someone from a cage or something like that. He got okay stats, mediocre, mediocre. He got 10 strength, toughness, dexterity. He's good at melee attack, defense. He, you can equip any type of weapon. He will take whatever you give him and he will fight with whatever he has. Well, if you happen to be at some sort of slave market or any type of city occupied by slavers, just buy off Ray for your team. He is such a nice guy. Since Ray is quite a unique character and got a place in my heart, I'm gonna put Ray into C tier. C tier for Ray is quite okay. Red. She can be found in Bark, wandering around the city. She has a brave personality. If the player has more than 200 cats and is in a squad smaller than 5, Red has a chance to pickpocket them when in talking range. Oh shit! The player can immediately talk to Red to demand their money back. Choosing non-aggressive dialogue will eventually lead to asking Red to join the player. That's very interesting. Very nice. Red will not join if the player has more than 100,000 cats and more than one backpack instead running away. That is a very unique recruitment method. She got good athletics, she's good at stealth. She's good at assassination. Well, everything else just normal. So her stats are pretty damn as basic. So I'm gonna put red into the D tier. I don't like getting stolen from. All right, next one's Riva. We actually got Riva in our team. She was a little bit strange, if I can recall correctly. She's a former Holy Nation citizen who was trained by the Floatsome Ninjas as an apprentice, but never made it to become a full-fledged paladin basher. <laughs> what the hell? Because of her anger issues, she refuses to be recruited by a male Greenlander, but will join females in any other race not of pure blood. She can be hired for 6000 cats. That's a really strange woman. She has an honorable personality and after recruitment will have the player floats on dialogue package. So no special dialogue package, just a regular one you get when you recruit someone from the floatsome village. Reva shares several lines with a fellow floatsome Digna, most of them verbally attacking Griffin. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> That woman has no chill at all. She also shares dialogue with the other floatsome recruits, though mostly information on the cannibal planes. Well, I got her in my team. She does not have special stats. Her stats are quite low. Rejected to join my character, cause I'm male. Literally Twitter user, but can she? <laughs> Nonetheless, I really liked Reva. I really liked putting her to work at my base. So I'm also giving her the C tier. Here we go. She's similar to Knife and all the other people from the Floatsome village. Ridley is a unique character found in bars in United Cities, towns and villages. She's a friendly, lone adventurer who strikes the player up on conversation. She only has one line of unique dialogue shared with several of the experienced or old, lore-wise unique recruits. Very interesting. She got okay stats. She's a female Greenlander. A little bit of unique dialogue options. I'm gonna give Ridley D tier. I'm sorry Ridley. It was just not enough for me. Ruka is a Shek warrior and waifu to most of the people out there in the Kenshi community. She is brave. She is strong. She is independent and she has no horns. It's common for Sheks to have really long horns, but hers got de-attached. She tells you a little story about that upon recruiting her. I'm not going to go into it too deep, but she is a character that can be recruited very early on for beginner players. Very good addition to the squad. I think you can get her for free 
Yes, she is a free, unique recruit. So you should definitely get Ruka into your team. She got decent skills, not the best, not the worst. A little bit of trivia. Ruka means hand in many Slavic languages. That's true. Давай махай руками, блин. Ruka, very interesting character. I don't know, she does not have that much of unique dialogue options, but nonetheless, she's available very early on. I'ma put Ruka into B tier. All right, Sad Neil. <laughs> Sad Neil is a very special character. I'll join you, but only because I'm weak and give in easily to peer pressure. Sigh. <laughs> That's Sad Neil for you. He is literally a depressed robot you can find in a skeleton in that one skeleton city in the black desert city yeah he is a little bit unique he he got no stats at all he is weak as shit so you should not go out with sad neil into the black desert right away give him some good equipment train with him a little bit beforehand but he got some funny dialogue options He is a very likable character, similar to Beep. I think they would be good friends, but I gotta have to put Sad Neil into C tier. Seto, another very beautiful female Shek warrior. Seto is a unique recruit and the daughter of the Shek kingdom's ruler, Queen Ezata the Stone Golem. She is given to the player after the player has over 35 relations and turned in either the Buckmaster or Holy Lord Phoenix to the Shek Kingdom. Very interesting. I didn't know that. I never did anything with the Shek Kingdom. Seto has a 20,000 cats bounty from the Holy Nation. If the player is allied to the Holy Nation, Slave Trader, Trader Guild or United Cities, Izata's dialogue for awarding her will be locked off, making her impossible to recruit. She has an honorable personality. She looks quite decent and she got really crazy as stats. Holy shit, what the hell is going on over here? If Seto is killed or imprisoned there are several world states that will trigger holy shit there's some stuff that that is gonna happen upon her death i never heard of anything like that that is quite interesting that is amazing actually well i don't know if seto got any type of unique dialogue options but her personality is honorable She's the daughter of the queen she got really good stats really really good stats but her availability is rather concerning you know it's really hard to get her i don't know how many players got to acquire her so i think i'm gonna put seto into b tier all right next one shrike well most of you guys know i renamed shrike to blade She was one of the first characters I recruited. She's also for free and she is pretty decent. She got quite interesting dialogue options. Her prioritized weapon is the pole arm. Not many unique recruits use the pole arm. She's a treasure hunter stranded in Mongrel. She has a smart personality, not so good stats in the beginning, but you can train her and make her really decent. And it's quite uncommon for a Scorchlander to have red hair. And in combination with those glasses, I think she looks a little bit like Blade, you know. Or Tomb Raider, all in all. I think that's a really cool character. And she's one of the top tier characters for me. So I'm gonna put her into A tier. All right, Silver Shade. Who the hell is that dude? He is a hiveless prince hanging out in a noisy bar to quell the sense of loneliness he has from being away from his hive. He will join you if you pay his debt of 3000 cats. You can find him in Mudtown, Black Scratch, Flats Lagoon, Smuggler's Bar and the World's End. He is very likely to have an honorable or brave personality. His stats are quite decent. Silvershade has two unique dialogue lines outside of his recruitment dialogue, but neither of them are exclusive to him. Uh, that's a little bit sad. He got a cool ass name though. Silvershade sounds really awesome. He looks a little bit lost <laughs> on this picture. I don't know, man. I don't see anything special about this dude. I did not encounter this character to say much about him. His stats are not really impressive, dude. I'm gonna put him into D tier. Sink Lied. <laughs> What the hell is that name? I can't spell that. Sink 
Sync lit. Sync lit. Sync light. Sync light. I think it's called Sync light. He's also imprisoned within the Tengu's vault. He has a 25,000 cats bounty. Holy shit. After recruitment, he will have the player thug dialogue package. Despite being a unique recruit, Sync Light does not seem to have any unique dialogue. That's, again, very sad. His stats are normal, but sorry dude, I don't see anything special about you. So we're gonna put Sync Light also in the D tier. Alright, who the hell is that? Zoman. She is part of a failing family business, fishing with her brother. She can be found in locations controlled by dead cat and empire peasants. Typically, she is found in Fishing Village. I think I saw her at the Fishing Village once. Aside from her recruitment dialogue, So Man has nothing unique to say. But she's a quite good engineer. Holy shit. She's good at engineering and laboring. So if you need someone to build up your base, to construct a lot of stuff, get Zoman. She can build pretty damn as good. Since there's nothing really special about Zoman except for that she's a good builder. Uh, I think I'm gonna put her into D tier. Alright, who the hell is that? You eyeballing me. You eyeballing me, mister. Stops Momuzo. Oh, dude, I remember this one. I've seen that one in Shark, in the town Shark, in uh, in the swamps. He, he just came up to me and asked, you eyeballing me, you know? And he just started to attack me. Ah, I'm not sure why. He just started to attack Mr. Jean-Claude Van Damme. He was highly aggressive, but the guards came to my rescue and they beat the shit out of this dude. So I had no real reason or even a chance to talk to him so I could get him on my team. Nah, I, I hate this guy. He can be recruited for a price no lower than 5000 cats. Offering him any less will insult him and make him end the dialogue. That's a little bitch. He has a crazy personality. Yeah, the dude is crazy. I hate his character. I don't know, maybe someone might like him. Uh, but I had bad experiences with this dude. <laughs> so I'm gonna put him into F tier. All right, last one, guys. Yamdu. <laughs> Can I help you, sir? At your service for all membership inquiries. Yamdu is noble squire supreme under his master Longen. I don't know who that is. He's the leader of the traders guild. All right. So he's some sort of bodyguard for the traders guild master. If you talk to him, he will give an offer to make an alliance with the traders guild for 100,000 cats. Players can also talk to Yamdu about which war will best profit the traders guild. After defeating Tinfist, player can talk to Longen. Longen will then tell Yamdu to take good care of the player character. Yamdu then joins the player faction and Longen promotes, promotes Sunida to Noble Squire Supreme. So if you beat Tinfist, I guess the end boss, you get Yamdu as a reward. Very cool. Because Yamdu is not marked as a unique character, Yamdu will respawn if the player leaves Trader's Edge and returns. This results in the possibility of controlling an army of Yamdus. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> That's amazing, dude. <laughs> Whoa! Yamdu got crazy as stats. Holy shit. What the hell is that? He's not a good fighter. He's more like a base guy. You know, uh, staying at the base guy. I mean, he got good laboring skills, farming, cooking skills. All the good stats for someone that stays at the base. Very interesting character. I didn't know this one existed. Well, and that was the last character. Yamdu. Where do we place Yamdu? Yamdu got very good stats. You can literally build a complete army of Yamdus. I never played with Yamdu. I'm not gonna put him into S tier, but I'm gonna put Yamdu into A tier. I think he fits in there quite well. Not as a fighter, since he comes from the Traders Guild, but as a good man that can keep the base running, stuff like that. Alright, very nice. That's my personal tier list of all the unique characters you can find in Kenshi. Damn dude, that was a long episode, right guys? Well, I hope you liked it anyways. Let me know what you think about the tier list. 
if I got some of those characters right or if I got some of those characters completely wrong. Leave a like, subscribe, share this video and of course a big ass thanks to all the lovely Patreon supporter. You guys are simply the best. Thanks so much and I hope I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. Until then, have a good one. Goodbye.